It's Tory manifesto day, Andrew. Potentially a huge day for the Conservatives in that this is one of the last attempts at a big set piece event before polling day, a last ditch attempt, if you like, to, to try to turn these dreadful poll numbers around. What stands out from the manifesto today? Well, I think the main thing is going to be tax cuts. Uh, National insurance got down again. Although it hasn't shifted the dial or changed people's minds so far, most Conservatives still think that if they hammer tax cuts, hammer tax cuts and hammer Labour over the accusation they're going to raise capital gains tax, that is the way to start to turn these polls around. Now, just as um, I think people rightly challenge Labour on where the money is coming from to pay for what they want, I think we should all be rightly challenging the Conservatives to explain. They say it's it's going to be paid for by cutting more members of the civil service. Uh, Are these the same people who are going to be sacked already to pay for high defence spending, as announced about two months ago? Or are they new sackings? How many civil servants, where and when? And what they call welfare reform, which sounds to me very much like a coded way of saying we're going to take money away from the poorest people in the country. So I think we need to know right now what welfare reform, who is going to lose you know, how and why. And by how much. And by how much and how it's going to be done. You can't say we're going to cut your taxes, Hannah Barnes, um, without telling um, somebody down the road how much they're going to lose in in welfare payments. I think it's really important that that message is hammered through today. Well, the the 2p cut from national insurance, which is the kind of headline figure, Labour have already said straight away that they won't match it. Wes Streeting said categorically, the money isn't there to do that. So they're already calling those plans into question. We're drifting, off to, we're drifting off to Labour policy, but I think rightly and reasonably. And, you know, again and again and again, Labour say we're not going to raise income tax, national insurance or VAT. And they use this phrase, we're not going to raise taxes on working people. Mm. Now, that seems to me to be a pretty uncoded suggestion that they will raise taxes on capital, capital gains, uh, including property taxes. And I do believe that our, if a Labour government is elected and Rachel Reeves is chancellor at some point, that's the kind of thing they will do. A few elements of the manifesto, the Conservative manifesto, are looking at housing. Uh, Sunak acknowledged last night, didn't he, talking to the BBC's Nick Robinson, that it has got much, much harder for for young people to get on the housing ladder. They haven't met their house building pledges over the last uh, five years, but they have actually done better than than than, than Labour did, I believe, in in the Blair years. But they're offering another stamp duty cut for first time house buyers. Not going to kick in now till four hundred twenty five thousand pounds, which outside of London. That's that's a lot. That's that's going to be most homes for first time buyers. A new help to buy scheme uh, where first time buyers would be able to to get on to the property ladder with just a five percent deposit and also a tax cut for landlords who sell to tenants. I mean, are we finally seeing the Conservative Party extending an olive branch to young people in in a campaign where they've really been kicked? We have seen so many of the Conservative offers targeted specifically at older voters and pensioners in particular. It is really good. And I think we should welcome the fact that they have something big in the manifesto for younger voters. But I would say if this becomes an auction about who, which party is going to do more on house building, it's one the Conservatives are bound to lose. Don't forget, it wasn't that long ago they dropped the national targets. Michael Gove had to drop the national targets for house building under pressure from NIMBY uh, Conservative MPs uh, and, and people across rural England. And at the last party conference, uh, Starmer made a lot about building in the grey belt, as he called it. In other words, the slightly cruddy, second-rate bits of the green belt. And I think in Labour's manifesto, we will see a lot, to- a lot of talk about new towns, another generation of new towns. And so it seems to me that at the moment, talking to architects, working with developers and others, Labour has a much bigger offer on house building. Is it, is it enough? I mean, again... Last night when the Prime Minister was grilled on this, it was put to him that it's not simply getting a deposit together. It's just life is more, you know, young people just cannot afford to, to leave home, to, 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 to live independently. Rishi Sunak could reply, well, you can't solve everything in one manifesto. Sure. You know, life is complicated and difficult. But I do think, you know, th- there is a market in housing. It is a market which suggests, you know, you increase the supply and the, house, the price comes down. It's as simple as that. And we desperately need to increase the supply. One tax cut that's not there that perhaps people would have expected and particularly Conservative voters would have welcomed is any change to inheritance tax. Are you surprised that that's not there or is it just... Slightly. I thought they'd go for inheritance tax. 
uh, because I think that is something that Labour might well, in due course, raise uh, rates on. Um, inheritance tax really divides people, obviously, and people who've got a bit of money and want to leave it to their children feel personally affronted by it. Mm. Um, and yet, if you're interested in the in the uh, gap between the, the the richest and the poorest, and you're worried about the fact that the boomers, in particular, have accumulated so much capital and younger generations so little, then you have to do something at some point about wealth taxes, and this is the most obvious one. The Times is Stephen Swinford. Uh, mentioned this morning that this looks like a kitchen sink manifesto for, for the Conservatives throwing everything they have at it and running through some of the things we've heard already about the, which we've discussed on the podcast. Is it going to work? Is it going to win over voters? Well, I know that a lot of Tories, because I've been talking to them this week, feel that they need a very big offer, something really dramatic, something almost shocking to, t to change the terms of the debate and a much clearer narrative than they're getting from Rishi Sunak. I think this is a little unfair. I talked to Rachel Wolfe, who was one of the co-authors of the 2019 manifesto, a successful Conservative manifesto, and I said, what is the sort of standout um, you know, as it were, shock and awe policy that they could plonk into this to change the terms of the debate. And she said there isn't one. Um, actually, if it's affordable, you know, it's been looked at already. You know, if it's playing to those kind of anxious, socially conservative voters, it's there already. And it's rather unfair to expect there to be some huge rabbit out of a hat. Pat McFadden, obviously the Labour MP and integral to, to Labour's election campaign, has called these plans announced by the Conservatives, I'm quoting here, their manifesto will be the most expensive panic attack <laughs> in history. It's, Pat McFadden has a good line from time to time. I don't think you'll mind me saying, but I was talking to him before the campaign and I was saying, why don't you make much more of the consequences of not spending more on, on welfare and hospitals and schools? Why don't you say, why do you make the case for tax? Mm. And he said, Andrew, Andrew, every so you want us to, write, to, to fight on a tax and spend election. Every time we fight on a tax and spend election, we lose. We're not going to do that. Um, and I think you know, a lot of his thinking um, will be vindicated um, if the Conservatives' tax and spend policies are really scrutinised for where the money is coming from in the same way that Labour ones would be.